It's Monday, April 13th. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel and it's time to take another quick look at the current COVID-19 coronavirus statistics as of today. Like it or not, we got to use this data to help determine when to get this country back to work. The IHME charts have not been updated since 9 April, so today I want to introduce you to some new charts, a double logarithmic chart, logarithmic on both the X and Y axis, along with some time animation to give us a good idea of the trend of the current statistics regarding the coronavirus. The latest up-to-date numbers are 22,823 deaths in the United States. This is still on track for a projection of about 60,000 deaths by 4 August. And that IHME projection assumes social distancing all the way through May. 9,385 of those deaths come from New York State. Here locally in our county, we've still only had one death and just 34 cases. So again, things very wildly depending upon your geographic location here throughout the country. Meanwhile, unemployment claims have shot up over 17 million unemployed. That's jump for a jump from about three and a half percent to 10 percent and the estimates are assuming a potential 20 percent unemployment coming very soon. We've got to get this country back to work. We're going to have to start showing logarithmic charts on the unemployment data as those numbers are just taking off exponentially. And over at the TSA, the Transportation Security Administration, they just keep the statistics of how many people are flying here in the United States. TSA numbers are down 96%. Only 4% of the population is flying today as compared to the same date a year ago. <laughs> Say hi, Pete. Hello. Show them your dinosaurs. Hey, hey what'd you do to the mask on that one? Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Go find it. So while the passenger airlines are in big trouble here in the States, I spoke with a CAL FIRE pilot as we're going to be approaching fire season here soon about the status of what's going on with the CAL FIRE air tanker program in light of all this. They are able to get the spring training done. They had to spread out that training over a wider amount of time. And the winter maintenance of the aircraft has had to been spread out over a wider amount of time too, so they had less people working in the hangar together at the same time. So by spreading things out, they've been able to keep up over at CAL FIRE with the aviation program. They've just had to spread things out a bit. One of the concerns they're considering over at CAL FIRE and all the firefighters in general come wildfire season is if we still have social distancing in effect during fire season, how do you properly run fire camp? Typically when you have these big wildfires, all the wildfire land fighters got to come together in a large encampment and live in very close quarters during the wildfire fight. So those are some of the things wildland firefighters are working out right now. Here locally, like much of rural America, we've had very little Im direct impact by the coronavirus. We've only had 34 cases and one fatality. We're already naturally pretty well spread out, like must, much of the rest of the na nation. Most of the statistics you see across the nation are, are in highly uh, densely populated areas. Ran into Dr. Joe, our local ER doctor, on the walking trail here yesterday, and he said things are so slow here in Nevada County at the local hospital that they've had to lay folks off. Being an ER doctor, he is not supported by the hospital. He bills separately, and because there's so much social separation, so few of us are out riding and getting injured that his income is down substantially. So how do we get this country back to work? Let's go take a look at the current statistics. First, I want to share with you our commitment to continuous quality improvement here at the Blanco Lirio headquarters. I got a new P-popping device sent by a Blanco Lirio fan. Thank you so much for this. No more P-popping peas. Thanks. 
Let's jump over to the IHME data at healthdata.org and make it full scale so everybody can see. Let's jump over to the projections. Last updated on 10 April, two days since the peak use of resources on 11 April, peaking out just under 2,000 deaths per day for a total back on 9 April of 16,444. And if we come up to 12 April, projecting 22,244, that was very close to what actually happened on 12 April. So far, this looks to be on track. Again, the low range on this is 26,487 total fatalities by 4 August. And the high range of this is 155,000 total fatalities. It looks like this whole range is headed slightly lower. And these projections are down considerably from the 80 to 90,000 that the IHME was projecting just a couple of weeks ago. Assuming full social distancing through May of 2020. Now let's go over to the COVID trends website. This is put together by Adish Batia in collaboration down here on the fine print at the bottom of the screen in collaboration with Minute Physics. His world data is using the Johns Hopkins University data for the world data and the U.S. state data from the New York Times. So this is the, up here on the upper right, we're looking just at the deaths, the reported deaths for the world, this first chart on a linear scale. Over here on the vertical axis, new reported deaths in the past week. So instead of, so it's the rate of death per week instead of per day, smooths out the data a little bit. Along the horizontal axis is the total reported deaths. So he's using total reported deaths instead of time, and we'll look at time in this animation here in a minute. So you start out with zero deaths, and you climb up until you peak out, and then until folks stop dying, this curve will drop back down to the horizontal axis, and you'll have your total number of deaths. So here's the U.S. with the latest data, 20,463 uh, total weekly deaths, 12,000 per week. So we've been above 10,000 per week since about the 8th of April. Italy and Spain on the way down, and they were reporting some folks in Spain already beginning to go back to work. Let's take this out to, there we go, 412. 22,020 as of the 12th. So now let's add the animation to this. Let's back this up. This is pretty interesting. And launch. Let's see. Let's hang on. Let's go back to the beginning. 129, January 29, starting with China underreporting their data, but climbing up the graph and then dropping back off. Again, this is the linear scale. Here comes Italy, Spain followed by the U.S. until today. Let's try that again. Ready, set, go. So by day, this also gives you an idea how the disease spreads around the world, starting from China, then tourism gets it into Italy, followed by Spain and the U.S., primarily New York area. So now let's go over to a double logarithmic scale of these charts. So same X and Y axes, new reported deaths are the rate in the past week on the vertical axis and total deaths on the horizontal axis. But in a log scale, so 10, 100, 1,000, 10, 100, 1,000, and so on. So this way you'll see the change much more pronounced. When the number of deaths begin dropping off, it's going to drop off precipitously in this graph. So you might be able to get an idea of when things are beginning to change sooner. So let's take the time element, back it all the way down to the beginning, 129, same data on a logarithmic chart. Launch it. There's China with its underreported data. Dropping off, here comes Italy, 
Iran, Spain, France, and the U.S., U.K., all the way up to 412. So with Italy, you can begin to see a more pronounced bending of the curb, curve on a double logarithmic chart. In the U.S., it's just starting to bend. We're just beginning to reach our apex. It's not so much that we're bending the curve at this point. It's that we're reaching the top of the curve, the apex, the maximum number of deaths per day or deaths per week. Now let's take a look at that TSA data. 412, as of 412, only 90,510 travelers through the whole United States compared to 2.4 million the same day a year ago. So if we back this down to the 1st of March, we were on track. About 2.3 million folks were traveling every day. And that just dropped off precipitously, 96% drop off to today's numbers. The airlines are in big trouble. This will take a much longer to recover from. So if we look at the county maps on the New York Times, on the left in blue, confirmed cases, and on the right in red and yellow, recent deaths in the last four weeks, you can really see where the hot spots are. And you can zoom into each hot spot or hover over each hot spot and get the actual numbers. So, so much of the country is virtually unaffected. How soon can we get back to work? How soon can the rest of the country get back to work outside of the hotspot areas? Or is that just simply too risky? Or will folks from the hotspot areas try to escape to places like Sun Valley or Lake Tahoe or Santa Fe and further spread the disease? Say hi, Pete. Can you say it into the P-trap there? Hello. Can you say Hello. P, P, P for Pete? <laughs> say, my name's Pete. My name is Pete. Is it a pop? Are you a P popping Pete? You got your hair combed today, huh? Mm -hmm. Looks good. Did you get your reading done? Uh, it was we're supposed to go until 1234. We'll have to extend it a little bit. <laughs> You've got to do your reading. I am. <laughs> Homeschooling, it's a challenge. So that's the way the data looks today, 13 April 2020. We got to get back to work soon. We got to do it safely. We got to get these airplanes back in the air here soon. Thanks for your support. We'll keep you posted here. We got more aviation content coming up here soon. See you here. Did you find any? Did you find any? You scored, huh? Let's see. Show us. Holy smokes. You didn't hoard any, did you? Just one. Wow. Oh, thank you, love. Oh, we're hoarding Joe IPA. The early bird gets the worm. Good job, Jenny.